Hi guys, Calder here. Uh, another session for you today on vocals. So I wanted to run a little exercise which you may or may not have come across before. If you haven't, um, you may or may not have come across people doing weird noises to try and improve your voice because um, that's the game and that's what we have to do to sort of set the voice up in a particular way. So today I wanted to talk about the creaky door exercise as a way of finding your mixed voice, finding your higher register in this kind of strange way that feels like nothing, feels too easy, feels like just a strange sound, but actually it's almost everything you need to get into your mixed voice and get through your bridge. Um, and part of the, one of the biggest things, obstacles as a coach is trying to convince students and convince singers um, that these sounds and these weird exercises are going to help them get what they're looking for. And that it's, it's as easy as that. Like singing is as easy as going, right. Can you hear how that's a creaky door? That sound will set you up for mixed voice more than you could ever believe. And it's incredible how easy that is. People do all sorts of things because they're not quite wanting to make the sound. They're still trying to sing. You're just trying to make a weird creaky noise, a weird squeaky noise. The squeaky you can make it, the better. Um, and I'm just trying to find a really thin, squeaky sort of sound there. By doing that creaky, squeaky kind of noise, you're sort of tilting the voice in a way which helps pull the chords together and you're not going to go breathy. You're sort of stopping that force that uh, you know push and that squeeze that you're trying to remove and get rid of never feels good when i demonstrate things like that these days um so i want you to play around with this let's see if we can make this sound let's see if we can do something around this sound i want you to sort of follow me a little bit um on an exercise today um and and let's see if this helps you out and i'd love to know your thoughts like I say, excuse me, um, it's it's often way easier than we think it ever should be. And people are baffled. I had a student literally just a few minutes ago and I can still see this confusion, this uncertainty on their face. And I'm thinking, yeah, I remember being there. I remember that. I remember going, okay, was that it? Was that, that can't be it. It felt way too easy. Um, it felt like no effort at all. And it's like, yeah. The fact that you're asking that question means you're getting somewhere. And um, half the battle here is being convinced that that is actually what you're looking for. S stop listening to people's records where they have three, four, five, six layers of vocals going on and all the production making it sit out front. And we, we have this idea that mixed voice and that kind of part of your range is big and powerful. It's not. It's thin and small and narrow. And it's amazing how it takes people a while to really hear what they're hearing on a record and really hear what the voice is actually doing um, and not be tricked and fooled into thinking it's something way bigger than it is because it's not. It's small, thin, tiny, narrow. Okay, I might start as low as down here and just go... Okay, I walk through this slowly at first. Try that. Just try that sound. After I've done it, just sort of mirror what I've done. But what you might do is you might go uh, and do a, a vowel, right? I'm actually doing the ung sound, the ng of the word sing or anything with ing on it. Ing. If you just try and lengthen the ung sound at the end there, it's, it's tricky to do that at times it's tricky for students and singers who aren't used to these sorts of exercises and playing around with these sorts of things they kind of they they can't flick from one vowel to another or one sound to another as easily because they're not just not as used to doing it but over time you get much better at doing these sorts of things so watch out for it turning into a vowel we can try it on an oo or a, an or sound or a or whatever vowel sound as well 
and I might do that in a minute, but I want you to try and do ung, ung, because that's closed and you get to feel the resonance. It really helps feel where it's going. You sort of feel this subtle vibration happening when you do that sound. So try and do it as an ung sound. Mm. We're starting right down there. Mm. Let's go up. Mm. Try and get that. Mm. Get the slide up to that top note each time. Mm. Oh, wrong risk out. Mm. just sort of hanging on that top note a bit more deliberately to sort of really focus on it because that's where the tricky bit is really quiet you're not trying to make a big sound again a misconception about high powerful singing is that it's loud surprisingly not surprisingly not loud often and that's something, again, that's really hard to convince singers of, including myself when I was going through this. I always have to point out. If I release that with a bit of a... You can hear there's chest voice in it. There's only a tiny bit of chest voice in it because of the range the note is. It's right up there. If I sort of release like that, you can hear that it's powerful. And sometimes singers are using little tricks like that to make you feel like it was a bigger, weightier, heavier note than it was. Actually, the note is... That's not loud. If I sort of tail the note off with that heavy chesty sound you can hear how the chest is involved if i just do a squeaky sound with all falsetto like that it's a completely different thing that little bit of power that little bit of engagement with with the rest of the voice and the and the, the both sets of muscles that's all it is and it's powerful it doesn't need to be massively loud but you can hear that it's more powerful than you see where I'm going with that? You see where I'm going with that sound? Look for the squeakiness, because then you're pulling the chords nicely together. See, that didn't come out ideally how I wanted it to initially, but you play with it to find the squeaky thinnest edge of the chords as you can and I'm really letting that top note shift up the resonance moves up here it's like the whole note the whole voice sorry is living in here when you get to that pitch Moving up one. See, I don't mind if it's not coming out perfectly well because, well, I'm, that's the whole point. You're trying to find that. You're trying to find the placement. You're trying to find the setup. It's, um, I've got a gig later on. This is a nice little warm up for me. Um, I'll be singing later on, and this sort of thing will help a massive amount in getting me where I want to be for later. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, for me, I always feel like anything above that A. Anything around here, uh, B flat, B, those notes feel like they go somewhere else. They go straight up into the top of your head when you really feel like you're in head voice. Mm -hmm. 
if I turn it into more of a, 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 a word, if you like, or a, more like I'm singing, not just making the creaky sound, you can hear how thin it needs to be for that note. Mm, but it feels like it goes somewhere else on that top note. You've got to try and let the voice go where it wants to go. Again, working with a student today, there were times where he was following the voice, following where it wanted to go, following where the resonance was leading him, following where he could kind of sense it. And then there were times when he was fighting that uh, and going back to a habit where, and he was pushing and squeezing. It's like, no, 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 that's not right. And it's like, okay, f try to follow it. Try to let the voice lead you where it's trying to go and, and get used to feeling for that. <coughs> um, I've been sneezing and stuff this afternoon. Not what I need. Excuse me. So we're up there. It's so thin and squeaky. The squeakier the better. Try and find that. And when you start to think about sort of classic rock styles and that kind of thing, you can hear how that comes into what they do. So you can do this in a few different ways. You can play around with it just with that ung um sound. You can kind of, you can go like this. So you hit the top note twice. Just getting you to really practice being able to have the freedom to always jump up into that part of your range. Let's go up a tone there. Try this. Try it on a on a different sound. So, uh, oh, I've let that go a bit falsetto because it's a new sound. Uh, Creaky door is a magic trick to get you into your top range. And suddenly you're like, I'm not doing all this stuff that I was doing to try and hit those notes. I'm just pulling the chords together and making a, making a squeaky sound. And you're releasing a lot of the pressure and tension and gripping and force and just sort of everything that's working against the voice is sort of suddenly goes out of the way again. People are often surprised it can be as easy as that, but that can translate into your mixed voice so nicely. can practice playing around with the different portions of the resonance and the different portions of the sound and try and go to extremes often when people are asked to do weird noises they don't really do it they half do it but try and go to the extreme of that sound see what you can find without extreme making you force anything push anything damage yourself but just find the thinnest squeakiest sound you can You can hear it in there. I sort of let go a little bit on one of those. Um, you're helping the voice live up here where it wants to. You're helping that resonance shift. Okay. So the creaky door, you can do it in a range of different ways. You can just play around with it. Just go... And you can really feel the muscles like pulling back. You can really sense that happening and that helps as well to sort of visualise what's going on. Squeaky, creaky door. I want you to try that. I'm going to keep it nice and short and simple today. Um, I say that. Apparently I haven't done. Apparently this is way longer than I thought. But 
I hope it helps. This, these sorts of exercises are the way forward. And there's a reason that coaches all over the internet are telling you to make stupid noises all the time. Trust them. We're all doing it. We've all had to do it to work out our own voices. Um, and there must be a reason for that. So give it a try. Rewind this video back, play through the notes as I did and see what kind of results you get and see if it helps you find some kind of balance and effortlessness that is not always there in your higher range and through the bridge. And I'll see you on the next video. Good luck.